So before we get started with an example, I want to just point out here that one of my suggestions, if you're going to work on a model that is quite large and possibly slow, you want to turn off the dynamic highlight for your feature manager over here on the left side. So let's see what happens when I hover my mouse over the surface bodies folder. Oh my goodness, look at all those lines that it just rendered. I'll show you in the settings here how to turn that off. You go to the feature manager, you turn off dynamic highlight right here. It's the fourth from the top, then hit OK. And then you'll see that it doesn't load those lines as I hover over. So as quickly as I can, I'm going to show how to optimize or at least de-feature a model like this one here. It's a light that goes on top of a chassis cab, like on the roof. And let's open that up now. Since I've looked at this model multiple times, I can quickly just point out these two uh, features here. You can see they just highlighted. These two features are the main pieces of what we're going to be dealing with. Everything else is a lot of stuff that we don't need to keep. So one way that I could just start off getting rid of a whole bunch of detail that we don't need is to select that and then scroll down to the bottom, do shift click and then do a delete on my keyboard and delete it that way. But the major drawback to doing something like that is that if you start defeaturing this thing and then you find out that there was something that you deleted that you want to bring back in, it's a long process to kind of do that. One better way of doing this is let's do delete slash keep body. And normally I do delete bodies, but this time around I'm going to do keep bodies. I can select these two and hit OK. And just for making this clean, I'm going to throw all these into a folder. So if I want to go back after defeaturing this and, you know, say there's something that I wanted to bring back in, I can go back to that keep bodies command and I can pick something like maybe I wanted this screw in there. You know, maybe I don't, maybe I want this pad, this little seal pad in there. Who knows? You can come back and edit it. It gives you some flexibility. So next thing I'm going to do to defeature this thing is use the isolate command on this lens. Now this is a common culprit, a common problem with lenses. You look on the inside of these things and oh my goodness, there's lots of detail that we don't need. Sometimes I know like for rendering, Charles likes to have these. So I'm going to um, copy these two main bodies just in case he wants to keep them but most of the time you're never gonna see this stuff so I'm gonna get rid of it all and the same thing with all this stuff down in the bottom we we're never gonna see that we don't need it most likely so I'm gonna delete all that but like I said let's uh, copy these two original pieces just in case that we need it we can do sorry I'm scrolling all over the place here the move slash copy bodies command. I'm going to select those two bodies that are the main pieces here. And I'm not translating them and I'm not rotating them. So it will it will just create a duplicate of those two. And then you can go up here and uh, select those two and hit hide. We don't need to see them for right now. Okay, go back and isolate this. Now let's start defeaturing these things. This turns out to be a perfect candidate for this delete face splitting strategy. Oh, it looks like I picked the wrong one. So right here, this face goes all the way around this and it looks like it's in a good spot to split all of this extra detail off from the top that we're gonna see on the exterior. So make sure that you don't have delete and patch or delete and fill turned on right now. 
just delete. What that does is it's going to create two surface bodies instead of one solid body. And I can use that delete slash keep body command. Make sure it's on delete this time instead of keep. Select that interior and it's gone now. All that interior detail is gone. These letters here, these words, I don't think we're really going to need those. So I'm going to delete those too. Now there's multiple ways of deleting letters off of uh, your models. This way I'm going to pick um, this method where I just delete the face that these letters are on to separate them from the rest of this surface body because I think that this is a really easy uh, open edge uh, loop to fill with a fill surface command up here. So let's just do that. Delete those and then I can do delete slash keep body again and select all those. Hit OK and then go back to surfaces. Do that filled surface command. Right click instead of left click. Hit that select open loop and it automatically selects all of those open edges that are in a loop. Click that merge result option down in the bottom. Sometimes it gets finicky and it won't let you merge the result with the surface fill command. So if that happens, what you can do, and I'll just demonstrate this here if it'll let me. I didn't practice this, so let's hope it works. A knit surface command. Select those two surfaces, hit OK, and now it does the same thing as that merge result that you had in the surface fill. Okay, now this is a surface body left over that we have. SolidWorks, from my experience, seems to like solid bodies more than surface bodies. Downside is that solid bodies can end up uh, using a little bit more graphics triangles than the surfaces alone. So kind of pick your poison or try to figure out which is the best option for you in your situation. There's you know a couple different ways of turning this from a surface into a solid. One method is to use that filled surface. Right click on here, select open loop, do a merge result and create solid hit OK and boom there you've got a solid again right there. Another way maybe we don't want to do that uh, is the thicken. This is a pretty easy all-around uh, method of just quickly turning a surface body into a solid body. Set your thickness down to something really small and Usually you want to make sure that the side is on the inside instead of the outside. Sometimes you might have to play around with these because it can get a little bit finicky and maybe it doesn't like the thickness that you use so you have to play around with maybe some different thicknesses until it accepts it. If it doesn't do that then maybe just move on to something else. But sometimes you can play around with these and get it to work. But usually you want it to be on the inside hit OK. Now we've got basically what is a surface but it's turned into a solid body so it's a little bit easier for SolidWorks to handle. Now let's go do this this part here. This is a little bit more tricky but it turns out to be really easy to split apart what we want and what we don't want just like the other body that we optimized. So I'm gonna go back to direct editing do that delete face command and I can select these two faces on the bottom here and then these two faces in this little screw hole and then these two faces that go around that inside there and that will separate all that stuff on the inside that we're never going to see from the stuff on the outside. Do that delete slash keep body command again. Select that. There you go. All of that is removed. Now, basically going to do the same thing, a thicken command like I did on the other one. But before I do that, go back to surfaces. I want to use a delete hole command on this, just because I don't think we really need that hole to be shown there. 
just make it one flat surface and then yeah do that thicken command again don't need to merge result with these okay exit isolate so now we have the two originals here that are hidden and then the two optimized or trimmed down versions left over it doesn't matter if these are hidden as long as they're not suppressed they will export whenever you do your save it helps a little bit before you do your export go to your image quality and turn that up just a little bit not a ton doesn't need to be a ton just turn it up a little bit before you do your export to a parasolid because what that does is it can help prevent errors in the geometry whenever you import it back in and you do the uh, import diagnostics so I'm just going to call this uh, B parasolid. Yep, part. There we go. It's in the right spot. Put this down. Put that down. Reload. Let's open up this. It asks you what your uh, template should be. I'm just going to pick steel part here. Okay, so here it is, the final result. Two of these are the optimized, and two of these are the original. So it looks like these are the original. I'm just going to suppress those. If someone needs those in the future, maybe you can put these into a folder that says original, and then these two are the optimized versions. If you need the appearances back on here, then you can easily copy and paste those from the original onto here. I'm not going to show that just for time's sake, but let's save this off and see how it compares to the first one that I did. Save. Let's close out of that. I don't need that. All right don't need this anymore so here's my optimized part with the original geometry of those two main pieces looks like it's just a tiny bit smaller than the first one that I did not really sure why but uh, it's just a tiny bit smaller in file size now here this version that I just selected here that's only about two megabytes that version is the same as what I just did except I deleted out the original geometry so it's not in there at all now notice how it's about one-fifth of the file size of this one now I put each of these files into an assembly and saved it so the original file I stuck into this assembly and it's about five megabytes I put this one into this assembly and it's 696 kilobytes. I put this one into this assembly and it's almost the same as the one right above it. And then this version, instead of turning it into solids, I just left these as surface bodies. Exit out of those real quick to go back to this. So as you can see, this surfaces only model is a little bit smaller than the version where I turned it into solids and the assembly is just a little bit smaller than the assembly where it was a solid so if you notice these they're almost exactly the same yet the parts that went into them are significantly different in file size what I found is that assembly files their file size is mostly determined by the total number of graphics triangles that are inside that assembly. So even though this part file has a bunch of information from the original geometry, because it's suppressed when I used it in this assembly, that assembly is just as large of a file size as this one down here because the assembly doesn't care about that stuff that isn't being used. 
Now I'm going to show an example of using the offset surface command, using that to quickly defeature something. And this isn't the greatest example, but I'm going to reuse that same light uh, that I did before. Uh, and this is something that I use if I can't do that combination of uh, delete face and delete uh, body where you split the geometry like how before I split this to where I separated all of that detail on the inside. Well, let's just imagine that this is a little bit more of a complex model where it would take too long or it'd be too difficult and tricky to go through and find every little surface on here uh, that you can you know select to split these apart like if you can't very quickly split them apart then maybe uh, you can do the offset surface uh, method and just for times sake here to make things fast I've already got most of this done so like I mentioned this isn't the greatest example because I did have to select quite a few faces because each one that you want to copy like you're se you're selecting all the stuff that you want to keep you have to select each of those like individually so this one not really a great example but oh well it's in some cases this is much faster than trying to split you know the the geometry into pieces and then deleting the stuff that you don't want so instead of actually doing an offset you can set this to zero on the the distance for these and hit OK and then you can uh, very quickly just do a delete slash keep body you can either do a delete body on all the stuff that's left over so if you hide your offsets you can just do a selection like this the box selection and it'll select all those but that kind of takes a little bit of time so another option is instead of doing that let's just undo that just showing you for example here oh, no we want surfaces we can do the opposite of delete body let's select our offsets go over to direct editing and do a keep body it's a little bit faster I guess doing it that way than trying to do delete on all of the other stuff that you didn't want now like I showed in the other video we can do stuff like a delete hole on this just like the other one we can do a delete face and get rid of that lettering very quickly select open loop doing a filled surface merge the result okay there we go now it's basically the same other than I've got a little bit of a gap here just because it was a little bit difficult to select in in that little crease there this is basically the same as what I had in the other example um, now if you want I'll show you an example of uh, using that delete hole a little bit more because the delete hole command is actually pretty nice unlike filled surface where you can only select one thing the delete hole command is really just simple fast way of being able to select a bunch of holes in the geometry and it might get a little bit slow though if you start selecting a lot of stuff as you can see it's kind of starting to lag a little bit now not showing all the previews but you can very quickly get rid of complex holes as long as it's on a somewhat flat surface it doesn't have to be totally flat but sometimes it t it'll tell you that it can't fill a hole if you select one edge just because maybe the curvature is a little bit too complex one downside to the delete hole command is that it doesn't create solids so if I had this uh, all um, closed up like if I didn't have this open loop here if it was all closed up and those holes were the only thing basically making it into a surface body you know if I used filled surface it gives me the option to create solid down here underneath the merge result thing well you don't have that option with the delete hole command it just deletes it and leaves it as a surface body one little note about when you're defeaturing something you use the filled surface command 
a few times it might give you some leftover lines here on this even though like this is all pretty much flat or it's supposed to be tangent at least you have leftover lines that you want to delete uh, you can use the delete face with the patching option to get rid of those lines if you really don't want them so it just patches that up and makes it all smooth so the offset surface command can also be used in very tricky and clever ways to get around some problems that you have when you're trying to defeature stuff so this is a cowl that goes on the front it's like the bottom of the windshield of a ram chassis and as you can see there's lots of detail here for this grill where it vents for the air on the the cab that's causing a bunch of you know increased file size and lag because it has to render and keep track of all this 3d geometry so one thing you could do is try to just delete all of that and then try to fill it in with flat surfaces but even though this is rarely seen at all or it's probably not going to be seen on any approval drawings or install drawings we want to try to keep some sort of representation that this isn't a completely filled in surface like this area right here this is filled in but this area isn't so if we try to fill all of this in after the deleting this geometry then we wouldn't really be representing what's going on here very well so one thing you can do is since we don't have a really easy option of deleting all of these things here like the easiest thing to do is just try to delete either faces or use some sort of surface extrude along these lines and just cut out or do a surface trim so you can either do you know trim surface or do a split command right here to try to just cut all that stuff out but the problem is when we do that we're going to have just one big open area left over so trying to use like filled surface command it's probably not going to be able to fill that back in and like I said it'll be just one big you know flat surface like this right here so it's not going to represent anything of this mesh so one thing you can do a very clever thing is use the offset surface command set it to zero and then you go through and start just making copies of all this stuff here and it might take a while but it'll definitely be worth it because after you go through and you select all of these you make your copies you can see we're going to at least copy some of these 2d or like you might want to call it 2d uh, surfaces here to represent that it's not completely filled it's some sort of graded or it's like a grill kind of mesh here so after you do that you can delete the geometry of the original stuff and then like here I've got just to show you the the finished product where I took all of my offsets that I did I took all these offsets I unhid them and then I used the knit surface command knit surface to put them back to connection with the original geometry so now I have something that is completely defeatured it's so much faster and takes way less graphics triangles so much less for rendering stuff yet I still have some sort of representation here that this isn't a complete solid you know surface it's a grill of some type Here's a sort of simplified uh, example of when you can use 3D sketches to help you um, sort of patch up geometry or defeature uh, using the filled surface command up here. If you try to do a filled surface on this, this is what it would give you 
and I've tried going through and you know doing different edge settings but it'll just give you the same thing or something even worse than this you know one option instead of using filled surface maybe you say well let's just try the delete hole and I'm kinda surprised that delete hole actually does work for that but the problem is that we still have a uh, surface body so one way of doing this is to use that sketch because a lot of times it's way more complicated than just this and you can't use a delete face you can't use a, a filled surface so let's just say you've got something complex you can do something like this and just draw a line or two to try to help simplify the holes hit OK on that 3D sketch and then let's go do that filled surface now on just half of this let's select these this time around I can't use the convenient select open loop because it's going to select the original stuff but I can still select that somewhat easily and hit merge result so there's half of it filled up and I can do that again this time I can do the select open loop little quick thing there but make sure you hit create solid this time so I know that was like a really simplistic uh, example there um, a lot of times it's a lot more complex whenever you're dealing with uh, imported geometry where you might need to use a 3D sketch to make a line somewhere in there but you can you can use those 3D sketches to easily simplify a surface like open edge loop so that the filled surface command uh, won't give you something ridiculous and I just want to show a really quick example here about how you can have a ton of faulty faces in a model when you do the imported diagnostics but don't get discouraged when you see a bunch because uh, there's a lot of times where multiple faces that are faulty can get fixed at the same time now this doesn't happen all the time but just to show you that this is possible it went down from 678 down to 2 and I'm not going to show the rest just for time's sake but yeah all the way down to 2 in one move here is an example of the drawing test as I call it you take your model that you've simplified you've tried to fix all the faulty faces and stuff and what you do is you create a drawing file and you just start throwing all sorts of different angles of views of your part into a drawing and as you can see I have some little specks in some of these like there's a little dot right there and that shows up in a handful of these drawing views and I've got this big line coming out of here for no reason apparently so the drawing test can clue you in to some you know errors possibly even if all the faulty faces are fixed like in the case of this model here I know that it doesn't have any faulty faces but for some reason there's something up with one of these edges of this geometry where in a drawing you can see this but let's see if I open this up or is it open yeah in position you can't see that at all in the the model view so I want to talk about the difference between display styles for drawing views in your drawings and what uh, it has an effect on. So I have two drawing files here and they have the same model. Basically everything is the same except that the display style of these two are set to two different things. There's, there's two options. So this one is high quality, this one is draft quality. Now look at the difference in the file size of these things. High quality is much smaller on file size than the draft quality. And that's because 
when you select draft quality, it saves a bunch of the information about each drawing view to the file itself. Whereas this one <clears throat> isn't saving all that information. So what that does though is when you open up these a, just opening the file up, this one with the high quality, it takes a lot longer. So this took over 10 seconds to open, whereas the draft quality version, it only took about three seconds, maybe four seconds to open. I've tried this with larger drawing files and uh, it can take a very long time to load. And I'm not sure what exactly goes on, but at some point it starts loading them sort of in draft quality and then changes them to high quality after it's fully loaded but it takes a really long time to do so your option for changing these you select your drawing view and then over in your options on the left you scroll down you have your display style and there's high quality and draft quality so you have to choose uh, what you want to go with either small file size but slow performance when you open it and what happens is it has to load the model in your RAM it's basically opening it up in the background to render everything or you can do draft quality where it saves a bunch of the information like into the drawing file itself so that your computer doesn't truly have to fully render everything as resolved in the background but since it saves all that stuff to the drawing file it increases your file size dramatically 